Okay, hopefully this is going to be a genuinely quick video. I know that if you've seen the last few of my videos, I'm like, oh, it's going to be quick, and then I just ramble on for 30 minutes. Um, but I had a comment by a user. Uh, they left me a nice comment, and I felt like making a video for them. Uh, and they were wondering about how to accurately model objects. Um, I don't do that much modeling that's 100% accurate. I'm always doing things for games where it's kind of like you can mess around with the numbers a little bit, like make things a little bit bigger or smaller than they need to be, uh, and generally mess around, but things do have to be uh, very close to the right size, and I kind of, you know, and to a certain degree, if you're, uh, if you're just creating things, you can eyeball things to be the same scale and just scale it up and down, as in, if you're going to model a screw you kind of know how big it's going to be compared to the rest of the object. Uh, but in this case, I just want to run through a few options that you can go through to uh, make sure that things are as accurate as possible. And I'm going to do it as quick as possible, because hopefully I'll do it before 12. It is pretty late at the moment, uh, so I've got to be a little bit more hushed. Uh, hopefully the audio is fine. And basically, uh, let's just jump into yeah, accurate modeling on this cube. Um, the first ones to mention are, uh, I've already got one on there uh, from filming this a second ago, but the first ones to mention are just go straight down to the measurement settings. Uh, I use these, I don't use, I don't use, I only use edge length because as you should already know, this, this cube, the default cube is two meters by two meters by two meters. Uh, it's important to remember that if if I scale this up, it's still going to say two meters, two meters, until the scale is applied, and then it's going to give you an accurate scale. So don't forget about that if you are scaling if you're scaling this in object mode, and you're doing any scaling that isn't in the edit mode then it's going to remain 2 meters by 2 meters until you apply the scale. But um, as far as accurate modeling goes, uh, my previous video, which is where the comment appeared, is on the snapping video. So if you want to be accurate and you want to get things lined up to the same scale, uh, same, yeah, just the same scale, then you're going to want to add, gr drag this and just snap it to um, and snap things together, which I've already got a video on. It's uh, the video just before this one on my uploads. Um, I'll maybe just comment the video, and you're gonna to want to model this to make sure that it's all, you can see that they're a little bit longer now, so let's make sure that this is 100% lined up, and there we go, everything's two meters again, even though I moved it around. And that's just by snapping, uh, which is a pretty basic one. Uh, and that's just displaying the edge lengths. I'll come back to the edge lengths in a second because our other options are face area, something that I don't use but I guess for, um, well definitely for engineering stuff you want to just, anything that's going to be made in real life you want to know how much material it's made from. So you want to make sure that things have a certain surface area or um, I, you, I don't think you can calculate the volume but with all of the information that these things give you uh, if you're an engineer, then I'm sure you can do the math. Because uh, you've got edge angles, you've got uh, edge lengths, face areas, and face angles. So it should be enough to work from uh, to model fairly accurately. Um, it's just about getting it in order. So I, so I will jump into saying that another thing you can do is say if I put a ring loop through this, we can see that I'm splitting it to uh, one meter each one meter each side. Uh, but I put another one in and now we've got 0.5 and 1 meters but what if I want these to be even? You know, so what if you know, you just got random layout here and I want this to be spread evenly and I'm like, alright, I could eyeball it so I can move this and just, if I'm moving it and I hold shift then I can move it a little bit more accurately and I know that I'm splitting two meters by three, so you know I'm going to have to eyeball and try and get right. Well, point point six six 
would be in the middle right, 0.666, because it's if I'm eyeballing it, then is that is that that's what it should be? Although I, I haven't done the math. I'm just generally saying if you just hold shift, then you should be able to line things up how you want a lot more accurately. Again, if I'm not holding shift and I'm moving this, trying to line it up to that 0.666 is not going to be very easy. Hold shift and then it's moving in smaller increments and you can just move things very accurately. But as you can see in this situation, like say if this is over here, things aren't very accurate. Um, I want them to be spaced evenly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit preferences and I'm going to go to my add-ons and I'm going to go to loop tools right mine's already on but check that and then hit w in the viewport and you've got your loop tools i'm going to go right to the bottom one here and hit space and now they're all even that 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 is mathematically evenly spaced now because it's, it's 0.666 recurring it's saying 0.67 at the moment um if i put an extra edge loop in there and i want these to all be spaced evenly then loop tools, space, and now you've got 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that's one way to accurately model. I think you can do it on multiples at once. Uh, I think that should work. I don't know. I've not tried this. There you go. So that has worked. Um, and now this entire thing has got 0 0.5 all the way around it, which is very useful. That's another way of accurately modeling. Uh, just generally t testing the scales and knowing what you're doing with it. Um, if you do have to be super accurate for things like 3D printing, uh, then the last thing that I want to mention is that you can uh, you can turn on your mesh analysis. So I'm going to turn off the edge lengths and I'm going to go for mesh analysis and we've got an overhang there and you'll see that the bottom face here is now red. It's saying that that is 100% pointing downwards and that this, it, if you were 3D printing this, I mean, that would be the base, so it wouldn't matter. But if you're 3D printing it and you've got a mega, uh, a massive overhang past a certain point where it can't just build it on top, then it's eventually going to say, right, well, this, this angle is too extreme to be printed from the bottom. So maybe your 3D printer can handle it. Maybe you want to add some supporting structures and all this sort of stuff that you've got to do for 3D printing. I've, I've not really done 3D printing, so I don't know. Um, but the more you scale this, uh, just the worse it's going. You know, it's getting worse and worse and worse. So, uh, so that's a good way to keep things accurate in terms of that. Um, again, same thing uh, as far as. 3D printing goes, there's a certain amount of just wanting to know how thick an area is. I think on this case you want to, I mean you want to make sure things are a certain amount of thickness. Uh, so I mean in this case if you want it to be really thin and it's a 3D model, well you do the usual, uh, you know whatever you do with 3D printing where you get a hole in the bottom of it and then you uh, and then you just slot it, solidify it and all this and make sure it's a hollow mesh. Um, but if you want to check how thick that section is, then then the uh, the thickness viewport can tell you how you know can start to give you that information within a certain amount uh, with some parameters that you can change. Uh, distortion. I'm not sure what this is for. I think it probably is for more 3d printing but you know if your polygons are um if you know that's you know if they're too far away from what they should be then you know because that's a bit of a messed up polygon uh, then it's going to tell you which ones are sort of just too random to work with which is uh it's quite useful and then sharp uh, which I, I think I should be seeing stuff, but I guess that's sort of the same thing. Just saying, if I pull this out, like it's super sharp up there, and it's a little bit, sh you know, it's too sharp down here. Um, I'm not sure what that is, 
I don't 3D print or create anything again in for the real world. So uh, a lot of that I'm not bothered about. But really, I guess the settings are just in there. Other than knowing the loop tools thing, um, other than knowing uh, just the loop tools and just checking through these options here, I can't think of much else that you'd want to use uh, to make sure that you are very accurate. Uh, if you're worried about UV space, this textile density add-on that is um, just search textile density in, in Blender and it will come up as an add-on that you download. Uh, that's very good for accurate UV unmapping, unwrapping. Uh, but that's I think that's everything that I wanted to mention really quick again. Just a uh, beginner tutorial. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.